Yo, it was the raddest thing I've ever seen Cyclops do in my life. I have good insider information. Once again, he was doing well for a little bit until this episode. What's poppin' Palaxy? Today on the Bonnie Board, we dive into all things X-Men 97 Episode 3, because that episode was wild! So buckle up and kick up that warp drive, and let's punch this thing. Hey everybody, and welcome back to the Guardians of the Palaxy podcast. We are so glad that you are here. My name is MT, and I'm here today with my two wonderful friends, Whitney Van Lanningham and Mr. Brett Turley, our producer. Hello! I'm so glad that you're finally on the podcast. You did it. You made it. I'm so <laughs> happy. Did it. I mean, you I'm, did it. I'm always here. <laughs> Yes, you know, he's always in the always, background. He's always listening in the background. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. he's he's restraining Pugsley in the background from barking or yes. jumping on me while I'm recording. But we're Trying very to excited. Cats from afar. Yeah, he he's just a he's a glorified cat wrangler. That's how it feels to be in charge of me, MT and Tommy. He's like he's like the guy. He's like the the guy who like tamed the Mogwai and Gremlins. But also, if you guys have any complaints, they're my fault. So can, <laughs> I, I, I'm the lightning rod that you can direct all of your hatred towards. The sets thing, that's my my fault. Please don't. <laughs> Please don't direct your hatred towards Brett. Yeah, he has a cool Nirvana poster behind yeah, him. Yeah, well, it's your Nirvana Ooh. poster. Uh, I know, it's my Nirvana, Nirvana poster. poster. Wow, she was trying to give you credit, bro. She was trying to, like, hide, <laughs> give I'm you trying. some clout. I'm trying to help she's you the out cool, here. She's the cool one. <laughs> We're both nerds. What are you talking about? If you guys don't know, like, these two are married. Like, We're in, married. In case you guys don't know. <laughs> we got married. We did that last August. It was great. Actually, um, a fun fact that I am going to share with the pals an abridged version but i actually experienced a jewel heist this weekend uh my wedding ring got stolen from the jacuzzi at my apartment complex and i am very happy to say that we caught the guy we caught yeah. him we caught him and we got him scooby-doo style <laughs> scooby-doo style columbo style elliot stabler style detective finn tutuola style like we got the guy there were security cameras and we got really lucky and i got got my ring back which is amazing hey. uh, so i'm still married to brett uh, i'm still we're yeah. still married if the ring was lost maybe we wouldn't be anymore who knows i don't know how that works but uh <laughs> i am married to the ring yeah he's married <laughs> to the ring and as long as it's on my finger he's married to me we at one point thought that maybe because it was shiny a bird took it like a crow yeah. And then I'd just be married to a crow. That was crow our deepest life. fear. Yeah. There's a guy in our who lives uh, in our apartment complex where he, he feeds the crows frequently. Like he goes out there Ooh. and he feeds the crows. So okay. he's due for a present. Yeah, so he's due for a gift. <laughs> so we were wondering, we were like, shit, what if one of the crow guy's crows picked up my, my wedding ring and took it back to the crow guy? or their nest and like gave it to the person who feeds them. And we were like, and then it would be a gift from a crow. And we couldn't rightfully take that back. You know, like when it comes to, <laughs> when it comes to majestic gems, if a crow finds it, it's finders keepers. When it comes, you're to making this guy sound like the pigeon lady from home alone. No, he really is. We have, we no, have he's the lady from home alone, but he's a man and he feeds crows with peanuts and we find peanut shells everywhere. Yeah. He's more like Rick from season five of Rick and Morty. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> he's, he's more like, yeah. Like Rick from Rick Mirai Jack. Well, you guys seem like you live in a very lively apartment complex. Yeah, we caught a jewel thief this morning. I can't believe it, man. I was so sure that a crow stole it and I was never going to see my ring again. But we caught the guy. Yeah. Hey. Jewel heist 2024. And I won. Another <laughs> win for matrimony. We did it. And speaking of marriage, uh, X-Men yeah. 97 episode three. Some uh, really uh, dicey stuff is going on with uh, Scott Summers. They had, to, they had to ask and answer some hard questions in episode three. Three. Like, yeah, are we still like, married? Is that my baby? Which one of us had a baby with Scott? Ah! Like that that whole episode went through that entire Madeline Pryor story arc at a lightning fast clip. Like the original <laughs> comic is just like so long and so convoluted over like multiple issues that they were just like, you know what? Let's just do it in do it in 20 Let's minutes. Let's just make that episode three minutes. of our show. And they Pulled it off. They pulled right? it so off. So well. It's an amazing episode. It honestly is a lot better than the actual comics 
um, explanation, in my opinion, because like they didn't go to the whole demon thing. Like she was, she wasn't visited by two demons. It's like, all right, now it's the sinister thing. It's all sinister. I do miss her goblins. I do like the, the goblins were fun. They were they were right? a nice little touch yeah. in the comics. You can't be a goblin queen with no goblins. Yeah, you can't. That's not how that works. But yeah, no. So like, what? How'd you get? What'd you guys think of the episode? I was obsessed with it. I thought that it was so good. Twists and turns, man twists and turns and I felt like it was just so realistic of the worries you would have if you found out that you were a clone and like it it felt it also felt a little bit Rick and Morty-ish there too when like Beth goes through the whole arc where she doesn't know if she's the clone or if the clone is her or what and this just did it in such a beautiful way like the way that they did it wasn't like funny it was just really solid and really beautiful and like all of those questions just like who am I did I did I even have a baby with this person is Nathan even my son like which am I seriously a clone and what does that mean for the real Jean Grey like does that mean that like I stole her husband does that mean that right. I'm not even his real wife I'm not even this Yo, baby's like, like <laughs> real mother like what <laughs> <laughs> mind blowing, mind blowing. And the way that they handled it and presented it was just gorgeous. I loved it. Yeah, like this is super random, but like uh, one of my favorite things to do is like on Twitter is like pr they present really weird scenarios and, and ask people what they would do. Yeah, this the episode. Weird We're familiar with your the, weird genie weird. tweet. <laughs> <laughs> I like doing my, I, I pretend like I'm a weird genie and ask people like weird Sophie's Choice type of a. Uh, Wait, are you the genie? Yeah, are you, in this scenario, are you the genie or is the genie? genie like mind controlling you and making you tweet these things or is the genie your friend and you're doing him a favor by tweeting for him because his genie hands can't hold a phone the genie is is an ancient demon who was trapped into a lamp that wants to be free <laughs> but he does his chaos in, in weird wishes <laughs> so he just asks people terrible wishes i think what mt's saying is we need to rub his lamp yeah <laughs> somebody out there please rub my lamp it's been years <laughs> cobwebs it sounds like a euphemism i'm so sorry uh but anyway I i'm wondering how you guys feel about scott in this episode because like you know i think it's sort of messed up for yeah. scott to be like you know what uh, gene's back and like i i love gene gray and not madeline Pryor, even though like this is my wife like we have the our, me our memories are still valid like yeah. this is like you know we, this is still the woman I married. She's like, nothing's changed other than the fact that you are a clone, but like you are genetically identical to the woman that I used to love. So like, why did you leave her? For like and immediately the baby. When and and the baby. baby, yeah. The baby yeah. part was wild because I was just like, okay, even if you're mad at her or like upset about the clone thing, obviously, we, you know what? That's a mm. valid feeling. I don't know how I'd feel if Brett turned out to be a clone. I don't know how I'd feel. Maybe I'd be <laughs> upset. Maybe I'd need like a 24 hour cool down period, you know, and then I'd, I'd come back and we'd be stronger than ever. I don't think I would feel that way though yeah but like i feel like, like come on like wouldn't you at least say goodbye to pugsley like if i you yeah. know like even if i was a clone wouldn't you still want to say goodbye to pugsley the fact that he didn't want to say goodbye to nathan was like oh that just like broke my heart that baby deserves better the first two episodes i think did a lot of work for scott's pr because cyclops has been the boring guy in public <laughs> opinion for so long. And then he was, he was skating around with his fucking eyes and it was the coolest Yo, shit. It was the raddest thing I've ever it seen Cyclops so cool. do in my life. In and my then life. this episode completely <laughs> <laughs> just goes, ah, never mind. He does kind of suck. Actually, <laughs> he does kind of suck. <laughs> You guys were right the whole time. I can't, I can't, I can't deal with abandoning my son, so I'm going to abandon my son. How does that make sense, bro? Yeah. Yo, it's way worse than the. I, I will give this series this. Like they did include that line of him, like saying, like I can't abandon my son, like because like I was abandoned. Because in the comics, he just straights up does it. He just like leaves Madeline and his child at his house. He's like, peace. I'm going to go with Gene you're officially abandoned. And it's like the saddest ending to a comic that I've ever seen. It's just like, she's crying at home by herself, looking at a photo 
of <laughs> of his his her, his her old husband and her baby, and like yeah, Scott Summers was super messed up in the comics, but yeah, this is still still pretty bad. It's uh, straight up yeah. abandoning your kid. But you know, Nathan Summers was infected by that techno organic virus. That is, uh, yeah, he was a bad baby. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, How dare he? He was a bad <laughs> <He's>, baby. <laughs> Can bad you baby. Meet <laughs> well, that's my point. Is like Scott's an asshole, but he's met Mabel too. So it's like I don't know. Right. He's got no excuses. <laughs> the baby has he wasn't no even, excuses. Like, he wasn't even entertaining the thought of being like. You know what? I should give both these women respect. And like, I just had a baby with this, this version of Gene. Maybe I should be like weighing my options and like being like, oh, I love her. I just had a child with her. But instead, he's kind of like, we're fighting about leaving the X-Men. So I'm going to side with the woman who just appeared. And she, yeah. can, right. she can take this baby into the future and leave. <laughs> pretty much just it's like whack. That, just whack that's a really good point because like he very much chose the gene that was like all about being on the x-men because like that's all the real gene really knew like she didn't know like she didn't have a baby she didn't like have like the the aspirations of leaving the x-men and like scott wanted to stay so like that's a really great point Bray. it's like she he just chose the one that wanted to stay <laughs> even though like they were completely identical and one of them had the memories and like all that stuff. He was like, "No, what? I'll just choose old Jade, and you know, at least she'll want to stay in the X Men with me, and she won't make me leave and get a summer house in Florida." Classic man move. Classic, Classic man, man move, move. I gotta say. But this episode is so fucking cool. Like one of my, I love uh, psychics and like mentalists. They're my, always my favorite superhero uh, trope. And like this is why. You know, this is some Doctor Strange ass shit. Yes. And the world bends and it's so cool. There was not a moment of animation that was wasted in this episode, I feel. Oh yeah, no, like the freaking uh Goblin Queen sequences in the in the mansion were like my favorite parts because I was like, yo, this is this is visually gnarly and visually disturbing. And like, it it shows the evolution of the X-Men animation from like, you know, being like a, a really sanitized kids show in the nineties to being like, you know, we're seeing blood. We're seeing a lot more like messed up visual things. Like obviously not to the level of like your invincibles or anything, but like, you know, it, it is cool that Disney is, is becoming more down with like being a little bit more adult and a little bit more, you know, visually, gruesome and, and mature and i do think that it it says something that you know it this was a cartoon that came out in the 90s all of us who watched it in the 90s are like in our 30s now so i do think that like it was smart of them to bring the show back and yes i think it's still i maybe not suitable for like very young children but i still think that it's a show that like you know kids and preteens can get into um but it's it's cool to me that they made the choice to also say hey shout out to all the 30 year olds that we know are going to be watching this <laughs> i mean like 90s kids kind of are in charge of the world now like we're like it's the 30 weird. year olds like this is a very genius marketing ploy that i feel like more companies should capitalize on because like 90s kids really love the 90s and the 90s were filled with really great entertainment that has since like faded away so like revitalizing like really great properties and like adapting them into like new more mature scenarios and like in creating an ongoing narrative people want to see their favorite characters again like that's just what they want they want to see it done properly too right yeah exactly like exactly. reboots reboots are happening constantly right and laugh there's always corners being cut like i mean it's a huge problem right because there's nothing originals being made anymore but like even the stuff that is getting rebooted it's just like did you did you see the animation for the Rugrats reboot that they did like two years ago? Oh my god, it was so disturbing. It was three D and weird, yeah. like abominable. Is, god, I don't know if it was any good. We never we never actually watched it. It did not look good. No, it uh, looked terrible. So I didn't watch it. I do not want to see that specific art style in three D because like it was purposely like 
weirdly like gross and weird, but like it works in 2D. I, I like it in 2D, but in 3D, it's like, oh my God, look at these big headed babies. Yeah, because you're seeing it from the perspective of a literal baby. So, and right. like, I don't know. I know that babies can exist in 3D. I'm not dumb, but I don't want them to. Not in my heart. We don't have proof of that, but I've never seen a 3D <laughs> I've never baby seen in my a 3D life. baby in my life. <laughs> They've all been 2D to me. Yeah, at age four, they just kind of pop out into the third dimension. <laughs> yeah. If you're if you're holding like an infant in your arms, it is definitely two dimensional until it hits kindergarten. I mean, the infant that Mister Sinister had in his arms was definitely two dimensional. Um, oh, oh my I, god, I this baby about... looks so old. Speaking of like, I know, it looks like animation. the oldest baby. That was like Grandpa <laughs> Baby, and that was before he had the techno virus. I know. <laughs> so you can't even be like the techno virus rapidly aged him. It's like, no, that's just a grandpa looking ass baby. I think that was Morph's baby. <laughs> <laughs> we need a paternity test because uh, Madeline Pryor seems to like her some Morph, I feel. No, uh, I feel like <laughs> the last time I saw an old ass baby was during The Flash. During the weird CG sequence of the falling babies during The Flash. One of those babies had a really old face. And yeah. I was like, oh, my God. It's hard to do baby faces. It's hard to do baby faces. It is hard faces. to do baby. Because babies do just kind of look like a bowl of mashed potatoes no matter what until they, like, start developing features. So, I don't know. Pretty much. Babies look like melted snowmen they for do, a little while. And until they, just sort they of reach... <laughs> Until they, like, reach an age where they have, like, defined facial features. Because, yeah, before that, I kind of just think that all babies look the same. And they all kind of look like like same, little, man. like little mashed I... potatoes in a bowl. <laughs> In a little bowl. I feel so bad when people are like, hey, MT, come see, want to see my baby? I'm like, I've probably seen your baby multiple times. I've seen a lot yeah, of babies. I've seen babies. All babies before. look the same. All baby, you see one, you've seen one baby, you've seen them all. Like, I don't like, know. Like, call me in a couple of weeks when it looks different from every other baby, because right now yeah. it just looks like default baby. Default baby mode. And like, honestly, like, if it, for anyone who's a parent and you're getting mad at me for saying this, I'm sorry. Your baby specifically is beautiful. Yes, and your baby's special. Your, no matter what, your baby looks better than Cable's baby. Yeah, or your baby looks better than Cable's <laughs> baby. Cable. First of all, baby, yeah. second of all, I have to admit that like when I adopted Pugsley, he was three months old and he oh. looked like he looked like a potato. I don't know, man. He was not <laughs> not an attractive dog when I first got him. He was not Instagrammable. He was a potato. I hope he's not in the room. I no, hope he's out I, of the room when I you're saying I tell him all this. the time that his glow up <laughs> is so real and so beautiful because he's a handsome little lad now. But when he was a baby, he just looked like a potato with two big ass eyeballs and it was like oh what is that thing so now that he has features <laughs> he's a cute little guy and he's my friend but oh man when he was a baby i was like is this guy gonna be cute when does he get cute <laughs> thankfully he got cute eventually yeah definitely not as ugly as a cable baby no not nowhere near <laughs> yeah. as a cable baby i would take a pug like 10 pug babies over a cable baby any day you guys talked last week about how fucked up morph sense of humor is but they yes. they continue to just come out of pocket in this episode. Everything that they do, like every single joke is like dark. <laughs> like it's like yeah. they just like mess with everyone. It's wild. I feel so bad for Gambit. I also feel so bad for Gambit. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, he's just I, yeah. Gambit is getting his girl stolen right before his eyes, and there is nothing he can do. Everyone knows too. Everyone knows she's <laughs> Everyone Magneto. knows. She's like, fucking Magneto in that like that room, that special like training room. Yo, it's like every yeah. time that they walk so by, they're like, up. oh, it looks like Magneto and uh, and Rogue are training in there. And it's like, no, they're fucking. They are exchanging rapid oral sex. The extent at which they're hitting us over the head with it. They they can't be fucking. They have to be baking like Gambit a really intricate birthday cake or something because <laughs> do you think that like, magneto's new thing is that he just wants to like be on out. is it cake yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> i mean he's playing is it cake with rogue in that danger room i'll, I'll yeah. say that's what i'm saying i think he's playing is it cake and it's like mm, yes girl it is we all know the show is too woke and it took all the cake out of the, the new new series yeah, uh, apparently <laughs> <laughs> So there was this is super random, but there was this comedian um, on Instagram that was like, "Yo, he 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 was watching the old episodes of X Men. He was like, Rogue never had cake in the first place. It was just that one shot, 
And like yeah. people have, have blown it out of proportion. And I was like, wow, why are we talking about a cartoon? <laughs> cartoon woman's ass with such fervor it's just so funny it's like a defining <laughs> moment for people it feels like yeah. i mean it's why the show got rebooted let's be real yeah. like we they or wanted like to see the cheeks rebooted am i right Re-booted. hey <laughs> x-men reboot that should have been the title x-men, X-Men rebooted and everyone and comes game. back with a bbl <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Everyone has a, like even Wolverine Beast, like just a big old ass. Even Wolverine and Beast deserve Beast, a badonk. Beast has to have a badonka dog. Yeah. Fucking, His you, name is Beast. They don't call like, him that for nothing. I, I think he could pull it off. Yo, like he freaking, seems like the type of guy that could like make like dance. You know? Yeah, like John Cena probably can. <laughs> yeah, like John Cena. <laughs> yeah. Just like, control over each butt cheek. It's like all right. He's just that smart. He just has control over every single one of his uh, butt cheeks. And yeah, pecs. he knows the which muscles he's pulling as he does it. Move the gluteus maximus here and there. Yeah. Um, yeah, because he's a little science boy. He knows which muscles make you twerk. He is my favorite X-Men tied with Jubilee. I love Beast so much because he's just a little nerd. And he's just like, oh, I'm just reading my books in my basement. Oh, time to go to work. I don't know why, but I started calling him Senator Blueberry I, for some reason <laughs> when I was a kid. And I just, I still in my head, I know his name is Beast, but in my brain, he's still Senator Blueberry to me. Listen, I I can see Beast running for, for some type of public office and failing, but running. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I can see it happen. But like I do want to ask you guys about like the time travel elements of this show because we are in the multiverse saga and this show seems like very tangentially cre- um connected to the MCU. Like there are a couple MCU easter eggs in in the first couple of episodes. So like do you guys feel like uh I know I I touched this like I touched on this in the last episode, but like we could be seeing like the origins of the cable from the Deadpool series yeah. in this show. I really think so, too. I agree with that. Um, I hope that we're not wrong because that would be cool as shit. That would be so dope. If we if we go into Deadpool and we find out that it was somehow connected to X-Men 97, that will be so sick, especially because I'm sure that you guys remember in uh, Multiverse of Madness when uh, Doctor Strange and America Chavez were uh, multiverse hopping, they found cartoon parts of the multiverse like they found animated like segments of the multiverse so i it would actually fit it would fit into lore that the mcu has already established that there are cartoon realms in the vast multiverse and i i think it would be so sick if deadpool finds out some way to incorporate like the cable from from deadpool being in the cable from uh, x-men 97 that'd be sick i'd love that so MT, just to clarify, because I, I you kind of hinted at this uh, last week as well. Do you think that the world that Monica traveled to at the end of Marvel's is the this ninety seven universe? And you think like when you're in that universe, it's live action, but we are receipt we we as viewers are watching it animated but like if they actually travel to that universe it's going to be live action and like that cable is going to become joss brolin i yeah i think that the implication will be end up being that like monica went into the x-men 97 universe when whenever professor xavier comes back if he comes back at all during this season um because like at the end of the marvels they did mention that xavier is alive so like that's the biggest thing that is separating these two, you know, projects from being connected until Professor Xavier comes back. Correct me if I'm wrong, because I I wasn't fully watching the intro credits this week, but Mm. wasn't there was some Shi'ar stuff in the... Right, yeah. So, like, I feel like it's likely that we're going to get a return of Professor X. Right, yeah. Like, I think that, you know, Professor X is too iconic of a character from the X-Men series to just be like, all right, he, he died off screen and we didn't really see it. Wait, did he, did he die on screen? Did he die in like no. at the end of the animated he, series? They, I, uh, I did not 
don't quote me on this. We watched Ryan Airy's recap before jumping Ryan. back in. Shout uh, out to shout Ryan Airy. Great recap, Ryan bro. Thank you. Uh, shout out to Ryan. Let's go. I believe what he said was on his deathbed, the Shi'ar ended up taking him into space, possibly because they're waiting for the right tech to heal him or they have tech to heal him wherever they are, which is why I brought up, I noticed the Shi'ar in the intro sequence and... That's an arc in the comics, too, where he goes off world and then comes back and he's like, oh, no, he's he's still alive. We, we brought him back. Right. Like, no, like I, I, I can I can totally see Professor X just like coming back because like in every X-Men project, he gets taken out of the picture in some way or another because his powers solve too many problems. Yeah. Right. Too <laughs> many problem, times. Right? He deserves to be resurrected once. Come on, bring him back. Exactly. <laughs> Just bring him back. We saw him, his neck get snapped in Multiverse of Madness. We saw him get torn apart in Logan. Like, come on. Like, oh, Seriously. Bro, bring him back. Give him a Jesus arc for once. It, it would honestly be, it, w- it would make sense because like we are seeing um, Deadpool 3 sort of like, you know, be a celebration of everything that was like the Fox X-Men. So I feel like Deadpool 3 will probably cover um, that realm, like the, all those Fox characters. But then this new universe that Monica's in is going to be the X-Men 97 characters. And we might get like recasts of other uh, X-Men and stuff that we haven't seen before. And so like maybe the MCU version of the X-Men will end up being the X-Men 97 versions when they, they just like smash, I don't know, everything post-Secret Wars. And, like, we're just being introduced it through Monica's view. So, yeah, I think the implication might be that, like, all these characters in the cartoon will be translated into live-action characters, which I feel like is not as fun as, like, the Spider-Verse approach where, like, everyone just cartoon in a, you know, in a live-action setting, which would be super rad. And I would prefer that um, because, like, I like that type of stuff. But, like, you know, I feel like it's just it'll just be like, all right, MCU is now taking an adventure into the X-Men 97 universe and like you'll see what it looks like actually because like I feel like Kevin Feige wants to play around in that playground in live action um because he really loves the animated series which like you know he's smart to and like I feel like this show proves why Kevin Feige needs to be in charge like don't I don't I know that there's rumors about like you know the Ike Perlmutter and his boys trying to take over everything and, and change the, the direction oh, no, of the No, not the Perlmutter boys. Not, not again. the Perlmutter. God, not oh, again. God my, they wreaked havoc on this town. Seriously. The worst thing to happen in Marvel Studios <laughs> is Ike Perlmutter, in my opinion, because like that dude, he's he's not with it. He's not with the times. And like I just in in the fact that like people are even questioning Kevin Feige's record, bro, like this dude put out bangers for years and like he made a billion dollar empire. And like, just because like, you know, hype is dwindling a little bit doesn't mean you get rid of your fucking secret weapon. Cause you already lost James Gunn. That's already a huge loss. There's also like the huge problem that Kevin Feige, like even admitted that like the whole thing with secret invasion happened because he didn't have a close enough eye on those projects because there were just so many and there was stuff that was happening obviously during the pandemic there was stuff going on with the strikes I don't think that he was able to be everywhere at once and I think that that's that has contributed to some of the like the drop-offs in the MCU like at least yeah, a little he bit. spread too and thin I, yeah, like, I think he just got himself spread way too thin. And if they give him like, hey, work on this project, he's so good at at doing that and making that perfect. I just think that he just has had too much shit on his plate for like the last three years. Yeah, like post Endgame, like they were just like, yo, let's crank out everything because we will make money because everyone loves Marvel right now. Like we can do no wrong. And then like it's, you know, people were just like, the, the the loss of like the big you know MCU heroes Iron Man Steve Rogers, it really did affect the MCU because like we watch these movies to catch up with old friends like that's pretty much why people have stick to the MCU and so like having the father of the MCU die and then having the father's bestie just you know become an old man and disappear and you know go do a um what's it called Gla- what's that that glass onion 
fucking the, the one before last onion. Um, knives out. <laughs> knives out. Knives out. Knives out. And uh, wear a nice sweater. The superior one, I think. The, oh my god, I love freaking knives out. So good. they're both so good. I love uh, both of them, but I do think that I like glass onion more specifically because of. This is hard kombucha. It's Jared Leto's hard kombucha. <laughs> <laughs> I still quote that all the time, and it makes me laugh every single time I think about it. No, so that's, no, yeah. it's just dumb. Yeah. So dumb and brilliant. No, no, it's just dumb. I wish that character was real so we could have him on the show because he's just a funny dude. Like, I love. Bro, that's yeah. how I felt when we solved the jewel heist. Benoit, if you're out there. Yeah, Benoit Blanc, if you want to join the galaxy. Yeah. I mean, like, he was involved with your, uh, with finding your wedding rings, right? I, yeah, I, he no, was he just was here. absolutely <laughs> there. It was, it was him, it was Colombo, it was, uh, Finjukuola. Like I said, all the detectives showed up. It was all of them. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is our favorite time of the Palaxy Power Hour. It's time for a fake ad. All right, I've got my trusty, dusty D8 dice. I'm going to roll these bones. Is it dusty? Is it really that dusty? No, it's not. It's pretty clean. (laughs) This is 16. So 16 is baby. Cool. Okay. And then this is nine, which is anthill. Baby anthill. Wow. (laughs) We got a baby anthill, ladies and gentlemen. Are ant hills too big for you? When you go hunting out for bugs during the during the dead of night with your little flashlight on, are the ant hills just too big? Cause you're small and little? Yeah. Well, guess what? I have a solution. Baby ant hills. They are sized for babies. So that even your toddler can go out looking for ants in the dead of night. Will they be red ants and bite your baby? I don't know. But the hill will be the appropriate size for toddlers three and under. Finally, an ant hill I can play with. That's right, little little Timmy. Even you can play with this baby ant hill. Ant hills are always too big. They're always They're too big. big for me. They're too big. With baby ant hills, now I can have fun in the sandbox. Have fun in the sandbox with baby ant hills. We are not responsible for any ant bites that ensue. Thank you very much. Yo, I so I thought the direction that you were gonna go with it, it was just like little babies going into like an ant, like all like I don't know. It was like an oh, like ant the honey I shrunk the kids situation. Yes, we can have that too. <laughs> Guess what? Now baby ant hills comes with a special shrinking serum so that you can shrink yourself down to baby size and crawl into the anthill. Well, mommy, they're too big again. <laughs> ah! And don't worry I'm about well. that. We can also give you a serum that will make the baby anthills even babier for your baby. This is perfect for interdimensional cable. Like, what the... <laughs> Well done. I would buy baby anthills. I would buy um, baby anthills for, for all the babies 99. in my life. I wouldn't. That's a dumb product. I'm so <laughs> glad that we're promoting them for free. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if you exist, don't you ever, yeah. ever approach us. <laughs> it's a bad Please. idea. It's a bad and idea. for those Maybe reasons, I'm are- out. We did the ad and it completely told people to not buy. Producer Brett just turning the fake ad, ad segment into Shark Tank and not subscribing. <laughs> Mr. Wonderful would never... He would never subscribe to Baby Ant Hills. That would be so funny if we, if we just changed the segment to a Shark Tank segment where we're just like, all sharks. right, sell, sell <laughs> this to the sharks. Sell this. Baby Ant Hills. Mark Cuban, you're going to love Baby Ant Hills. Put them on the pitcher's mound for the Dallas the Dallas Mavericks. They're a basketball team. Wait, is that a baseball team or is that a basketball team? It's a basketball team. Okay, I was right. Okay, Alexa, cut that out. Back to the program, because I do I do want to talk about an interesting um, theory that I, I had about, like, the direction of the future of the show, because I have this weird feeling that we might see um, a spinoff of, from x 97 into an Exiles TV show, um, because, like, we have Morph on the team this season as a, you know, a mainstay of the, of the, you know, of the team. And like Morph is very much connected to the Exiles team in the comics. And so like, given that this is the multiverse saga and like, you know, Marvel is is crafting this narrative about like, you know, time travel and all this stuff in multiple universes, the Exiles team being a multiversal team where, you know, Captain Carter first got her start, like her first uh, appearance was on the cover of an Exiles comic. I think that, you know, it's just the right, 
next step for Marvel Studios or or, or a, a rational next step, rather. It's an interesting spin, right? Where right. like we're all getting psyched about X Men again, and Exiles this hasn't been something that's been explored, and it kind of thematically lines up. I think it's a I think it's a cool idea, and we were talking a little bit about this prior to recording, but like also Marvel Snap is like doing an exile season really soon so i'm kind of like i think i think that promotion might coincide with some things that are going on behind the scenes so i think that's i think there's there's weight to this honestly yeah i feel like especially knowing that marvel snap information and like knowing how like marvel likes to you know do brand synergy with all their products and like to you know get people excited it would it would make sense for exiles to be on the way like it just it just feels like, uh, you know, what if is like, you know, the cartoon show right now that explores the multiverse because it's very hard to explore the multiverse with, you know, live action because that takes a very long time to produce all these movies. So like going, you know, having Exiles as like an addition to what if or like maybe like if what if wants to stop and like, you know, what Exiles wants to continue where what if uh, left off, that'd be great. But like, you know, knowing that the mutant saga is coming like very, very soon and like, I feel like the exiles being both a multiverse and mutant narrative is the perfect transition um, to get people to like from the multiverse saga to the, the coming mutant saga, because it's just like really great characters, just traveling the multiverse, meeting other really strange mutants um, and just like forming a, a, a weird team, a, a new multiversal X-Men team that I feel like people yeah. would really love to see. Do you think they need a, a lister though? Leading the team yeah, or just on the team? Uh, it wasn't there. There I was mean, at some point. I haven't read any Exiles, but I was looking at mm. covers. Was there a uh, Chibi Wolverine? I think there was at one point, like a little cartoon Wolverine man. Um, that I, <laughs> I totally forgot. Yeah, well, I think that's totally accurate. And that's actually interesting to know. I didn't know that either. But that's interesting to know because Disney Disney recently has been doing like chibi series of their animated properties. So like, for example, yeah, that's a very and Devil thing. Dinosaur has yeah. a chibi episode where they like it's like a whole episode of that. And then they also have some chibi shorts that are like available online, I think. So that is actually really interesting because if if there's a Chibi Exiles already and they go the exile route, that's perfect for what they're already doing. Like Disney's already building like a Chibi verse just in their in their shows and in those properties. Bro, like I would really ho- I, I hope that they explore the chi- cuz like there was a Chibi like um Spider-Man uh, or something like that in um into the spider verse or or across the spider verse rather like a little like little fun little chibi little band so I, I would love to see like a chibi um universe of of Marvel characters that'd be super cute is chibi Wolverine enough <laughs> is he enough I don't think I think that you know since the multiverse is so big like you know they can pull other like big you know name heroes like you know like your Wolverines or your you know your your cyclops i mean maybe not cyclops <laughs> he's still like rising towards coolness still he was once again he was doing well for a little bit until this episode <laughs> yeah he was pretty much it would be great to see uh deadpool involved like in with the exiles tv show just like ryan reynolds just popping in or just like another variant version of deadpool if it was donald glover's version of deadpool i would oh shit that would be so sick i just want donald glover and literally everything he's my favorite kevin feige if you're watching this for some reason yeah call donald glover and ask him him if he wants to do it yeah because like it would be fantastic he's too good he's so funny and he's so charming and he's so intelligent ah just talented all over the place um But speaking of uh, potential celebrities in Marvel properties, I know that I've told both of you guys this, but I don't know if I've said it on the podcast or not. So if I have, sorry for repeating myself. However, uh, I have good insider information that uh, local comic book shops in my area, at least, have been asked to start stacking issue number one of The Dazzler. And I think that that could be a sign that Taylor Swift really is going to be in Deadpool as the Dazzler because all of these comic book stores are getting shipments from Marvel of the Dazzler's first issue. 
So Ooh. does Dazzler go by the that. Dazzler? Oh, I don't know. I was just saying the da- I don't <laughs> fuck it. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. It's like I'm the idiot. Rizzler. It's like, whoa. Yeah, I don't the know. Rizzler. The Rizzler. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm an I'm an old man inside. I apologize. <laughs> Shit, I'm becoming more like my mom every day. No, I, I feel like the Dazzler would also work. Like she is like a rock star, so I feel like she would call herself the Dazzler. Yeah, bro. Please ignore me, but also I hope she calls herself that once so that I'm vindicated. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, it's, it's totally fine. It's no big deal. But like, no, I think that there was a big, like, there's a good chance that that could actually be happening. And it would be a really, at least like at the very least, a really fun cameo in Deadpool 3 just to see like Dazzler doing a concert in the void or something like that. It would be so fun. Would be great. That would be um, super great. <laughs> yeah. What what X-Men do you guys want to see or mutants? Do you want to see like come to all of these shows? Not just like Deadpool 3, but X-Men 97, if we do a future Exiles show. Who do you want to see? I'm like looking at the Exiles roster right now and Beak's there. Fuck yeah. I wanna I wanna see Beak. Give Beak me is, Beak. Beak is very fun. Give me gold balls. Yo, go I was thinking about gold balls. I was like, I don't know. If- because Gold Balls was uh when, when I first was introduced to Gold Balls, it was like during the Miles Morales comic when he was like roommates with uh Miles and um and in his Genki. Um, but like, yeah, Gold Balls is just super fun and, and stupid as as a character. I really want to see him on the on the X Men outright. I just can't believe that there's a guy named Gold Balls. How is yeah. that? <laughs> Who allowed him? They did make a Gold Balls reference in the first episode of ninety seven, which I thought was pretty fun. But he's like, he's a character that's had an evolution that's gone from like kind of a a loser to someone deserving of an x-men spot hey man like someone that could make gold balls is uh gonna do well in life because uh, yeah you're just gonna be balling like i don't know how he's not rich man i I, I don't know but yeah no i i I really want to see um obviously we we got a little bit of a of a tease towards uh iliana from the x-men when morph turned into her and i was like yo like that very much hints that she's around. I'm like, where is she? Please bring her onto the show. What the heck? Because like, I, I love magic so much. She's like super badass. And they also they did both versions of magic too, right? Because they they like she had like a demon version too, which was super fucking cool. I was like, oh, good transition. Um, yeah. I really enjoy. Um, obviously, Blink. She's fantastic. She was she was um she was in uh Days of Future Past uh, briefly. Briefly, yeah. um, she was one of the people that just got murdered. Yeah, there's a whole lot of murdering. Okay, you guys, I will admit that I have not read this, but I too am looking at the uh, the Exiles roster right now. And let me tell you what I want to see. Apparently, in Uncanny X-Men number 461, Mojo summons a team of lawyers modeled after the Exiles team to capture his recently created ex-babies. That's right. He makes the (laughs) ex-babies, he makes manufactured child clones of all the X-Men. And that's what I want because we can get them all to buy baby anthills for the baby (laughs) (laughs) X-Men. Just for the ad. You're you're pushing baby anthills. That is our demographic. And we need to tap into that that market, the baby X-Men market. Anthills are too big. Anthills are too big for the baby X-Men. God damn it. We need to change that. Be the change you want to see in the world of Ant Hills. I, I I like that premise. So I got to read that because that sounds so ridiculous. That sounds great. That's, I have not read it, but guess what I'm doing right after this? I'm going to go read that because that sounds <laughs> hilarious. Uh, apparently Forge was in uh, on the Exiles as well. I, I oh. totally like forgot about that. It, it seems like a lot of X-Men have transitioned over. Also like Spider-Man ni- 2099 is on it, mm-hmm. which is crazy. Yes. Freaking, yeah. Like I just want them to throw us like as much like that that show if they do that would be just an avenue just to, to throw like the craziest x-men that have ever been made onto the big screen that we would never ever see otherwise on any other show because like i i like what if scenarios and like crazy like characters that like you know, original characters that we've never seen that like artists and like you know creators can just go wild and make like your baby wolverines and whatnot like i just want all sorts of weird x-men um, but like, no, I, I've been going the other day. Um, I've been talking about Forge a lot because like Forge shows up at the end of this episode. Who's like, yeah, Storm, let's get your powers back. And like Forge is such an interesting character because like he has a lot of 
promise, in my opinion, because he could potentially be the next Tony Stark of the MCU because like his entire power set is very Tony. He's, he's just a genius. He just builds stuff. And like, he, he was very much like visually modeled after Tony Stark, I feel. And like, you know, now that like, you know, Marvel studios in like Robert Downey Jr. have like very much moved past, you know, that iteration of Tony Stark, we're likely after the success of Oppenheimer and like everyone just making fun of Robert Downey Jr. He ain't never coming back it, like it, permanently. Like he's never coming back permanently, maybe for Secret Wars, but after that, no. Um, but I think Forge, because he's like this genius and like he's very Tony Stark like would be a fantastic way to continue that like or or fill the hole of like a genius a super genius um in the mcu that you know obviously isn't reed richards because like reed richards is obviously coming too and obviously not fastos because the eternals are dead never to be seen again, <laughs> never never to be seen again. Never coming yeah. back. which is like insane to me Get, like oh, I don't so, understand. we've talked about it so much i don't want to bore people i know we've talked about it so much i don't care sorry audience we love you but you gotta hear us out on this one <laughs> I just want to know what happens with the big baby. I just want to know what happens with Cersei and Dane Whitman. Well, that baby, big baby's got a big baby Aunt Hill. Oh, yeah. He's there we go. Big baby Aunt Hill. There we go. I, now Cersei I'm made a it. big Aunt Hill, big baby Aunt Hill <laughs> at the end of Eternal. Can you imagine if that's how that movie ended instead? It's yeah. like a mixture of Quantum Mania and Eternals because yeah. the ants just come out and pull Tiamat back in. <laughs> It's like we are now the god ants. <laughs> yeah, they're all they're all communists. It's fine. But no, like I think that you know, the ending of the show. Like I really hope that Storm ends up. I mean, obviously Storm's probably gonna get her powers back. But like I just wonder what that's gonna mean for like the future of like mutant kind in like that universe. Because like if someone can like restore powers, like can you like activate X genes like on your own? Like what does that mean? To like be able to restore someone's like powers from nothing. That's a good point. I didn't even think about it like that. It's probably going to be one episode, right? Because they moved <laughs> through. Yeah, they damn, moved through they the flew Goblin through Queen that. So, so like, we'll find out in a week. I do know at some point in the comics, Storm uh, got her powers back because Loki gave her Thor's hammer, and mm. she very oh. briefly became the the goddess of storms. That's really cool. Ninety seven has crossed over with other you know, Marvel characters before. Bro, that's a cool Exiles character right there. Like a f- freaking Storm yeah. Thor. Like, come on now. That's fun. I like that. Yeah. I, that's fun. Storm Thor sounds really cool, actually. And fucking she throws the hammer and Chibi Wolverine's just on top. Like, hey, yeah. hey, hey. Yeah. Seriously, bro. Like, yo, so this is like sort of like kind of a tangent, but like during the um the Secret Wars event, like we got introduced to the, the Thor core, which is like a core of like a bunch of Thors. Like a, just a, an army of Thors, and like I would love for like a Storm Thor to come from the Thor core. Thor core and seven years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Thor core and seven years ago. I mean, that's how long Secret Wars feels at so at this point because like it's what was that 20, 2014? I don't know, but it's been a long time. She's there. She's part of the Thor core. Oh, is, is she? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. She's in the background. Let's bring in. Let's bring in Storm Thor from the Thor core. Um, into the MCU, like, like, come on, man! I fucking Let's love the Thor. But yes, no, I'm very excited to see what comes next for the X Men and like how like Cable and and um, what's his face, uh, black dude, time travel man. Why am I blanking on his face? Bishop. Um, Bishop. 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 How that um narrative um continues on through the rest of the series because like obviously um this is Sin- Mr. Sinister made uh, mess up with his baby to protect himself from apocalypse in the comics. So like we could potentially see apocalypse come up at, at, at some point in the season, which would be very fun. They did name drop him in the first episode. And like, it would be, it would be really interesting to see if like, you know, the Oscar Isaac version of uh, apocalypse gets like mentioned or something. Cause like, you know, Oscar Isaac is very much involved with the MCU. And so like, when we are in the multiverse saga, so like, it would be really interesting to see if uh, he comes back in some respect. But like that probably won't happen in this series. But that just popped into my brain just now and was like, hey, should I just bring this up? I'm just going to talk about it. I'm just going to do it. Hell yeah. That's what the galaxy is <laughs> for. It's for all the little thoughts yeah, in man. your brain that you just got to say. My therapist doesn't give a crap about this. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, explaining the X-Men to my therapist. I mean, that's why we have a channel, right? We're just sort of like... Uh, 
dumping all of our knowledge onto uh, just all of our thoughts onto the wonderful people of the internet. Yeah. Whether you guys like it or not. <laughs> but we hope you like it because we like you. Yes. I got I got news for you. If they're this if they're this far into this episode, they they like it. Yeah. If they if they made it this far. I mean, far. I would hope so. <laughs> if they made it this far. It's like an hour and three minutes, baby. Let's go. But yeah, thank you guys for watching us and listening to us uh talk about X-Men, which is so great to be able to live in a time where we're just getting these amazing reboots and Kevin Feige is doing an amazing job with the series and I cannot wait to see how this series shapes up. You guys are amazing for for listening and, and tuning in and supporting us. You can support us even more by going to guardians of the store and buying one of our cool mugs, shirts, uh, well, we got crop tops. We got crop we got tops. tops. We got sweatshirts. We got crop tops. We got it all, baby. And crop tops are for everyone. You don't, you know, like they're not just for the ladies. They are for the gays, the theys, the men who want to risk it all. I think that the Palaxy crop tops would fit into X Men ninety seven so perfectly because everyone has a crop top. Alexa, put that picture of yeah. the crop top X Men that I posted <laughs> yeah, the other day on Twitter. Man, Alexa. Put that up. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, head on over to Guardians of the Palaxy store to buy some of our amazing new merches today, so that you could look nice and fresh and support the Palaxy in your own way. Yes, Hell you guys yeah. are amazing. Thank you guys for watching the show, and we'll see you guys next week. Bye. See you next be sure week. to tune in next week for Life Death. It will be very quick. <laughs> <laughs>